Hey, what's up everybody? So we're here with the CR-10S5 and we got the Star Wars Starkiller helmet from Andor printing out on the S5 and this is officially my first successful print on the S5. Hey, by the way, if you're new here to the 3D Theory channel, we're all about 3D printers and 3D printing fun props. If you're interested in these topics, then consider subscribing and click that notification bell to get notified when I upload new videos. Let's get started. It hasn't completely finished yet, but this is the farthest along any print has ever got. And this thing had been a journey to figure out. But as you can see, we finally have the print at about 51% complete, as you can see down there in the bottom right hand corner. I have been noticing a couple of annoying things that are happening with the print, and I don't really know why that is. For example, as you can tell, there's a lot of stringing that's happening in the helmet. Now, I really don't know what the cause of it is, but there's a lot of it, and I can't quite figure out why that's happening. Now, I have seen it before, I've seen it with when I was printing out the Green Goblin helmet, the same sort of thing was happening as well. I was getting stringing all around and I didn't really know what the cause of it was. But nonetheless, there was no real issue. It still printed out just fine, just like the Starkiller helmet here is printing out just fine. It's actually, it actually has a pretty nice print quality. So I did want to talk about how I finally got the CR-10S5 to start printing. If you've seen my two other CR-10S5 videos, that I released previously, you'll know that I ran into a lot of issues with this thing. First of all, I had to completely replace the power supply in the control box there, and also the heating module. And no matter how I bed leveled this thing, it was just not wanting to play ball. It was not wanting to give me a successful print. Since this was my first 3D printer that had manual bed leveling available, it took me a little bit of time to figure out how to bed level this. And since this is such a massive bed, it did take some time to finally figure out how to successfully level this bed. Even though this thing does come with BL Touch right over here, it does like a 25 point automatic bed leveling sequence all across this massive bed. You still need to tweak the bed a little bit and also mess with the Z offset to get it just right. Now the one complaint I have about this thing is that it really wobbles, as you can see there. When it's doing little intricate pieces, it just shakes the entire table. And it doesn't do it in the longer sequences, but when it's doing little detailed pieces, that thing shakes. The obvious issue you can think of when having a big machine like this is the space it takes up. I had to buy a dedicated table here just to be able to fit the CR-10S5. And I'm not too sure if you can make out how big this thing actually is, but it is pretty massive. And to get a table that fit just right was I think a necessity. One big issue I was having was that during printing, the four tightening knobs that are on the bottom of the bed in the four corners of the bed were getting loose. And this is actually one of the knobs right there. And they're on the four corners of the bed and they just get loose and the whole bed started to wobble. And so if you could imagine, while this thing was printing, I would come in and the whole bed was wobbling as the bed was moving back and forth. It was literally just, it looked like it was on springs because they, they were on springs, except the knobs were incredibly loose. And this was happening over and over again. The bed would just get loose and it would start wobbling as the bed was moving back and forth and it was just creating a nightmare of a print, basically a failed print. So what I ended up having to do was I had to contact Creality and let them know, hey, my bed is wobbling during the print. It starts getting loose, so loose that it just, it just moves around and shakes. So this is what they told me to do. They asked me to tighten all of the knobs down at the bottom of the four corners of the bed there, then to equally loosen three to five turns each corner equally. Then I'll proceed with leveling the bed as you see in the Creality video linked in the description below. First, I made sure that the Z offset was set to negative 2.199 because in the video that they have on their website of how to bed level, this is part of the process and they make sure to let you know that you need to be at 0.2, but on the screen it reads negative 2.199. And I'll put a link to their video in the description below if you guys want to check that out. Then I go into the control box again and I just click auto home and the 3D printer auto homes. I realized there was one thing I wasn't taking into consideration when bed leveling and setting my Z offset. I wasn't taking into consideration that when I added the PEI sheet, there's the thickness of the PEI sheet itself and also the magnetic pad that goes underneath it. So it was giving a little bit of thickness 
to this glass bed. And so I figured that if I were to take that into consideration when bed leveling, it would fix the issue. So Creality's video said that you need to bring the Z axis down to zero. And since I have a PI sheet that has somewhat of a thick magnetic sheet underneath it, I factored that in. So instead of lowering the Z axis to zero, I lowered it until it touched the bed, but I put a sheet of paper underneath the nozzle and made sure the sheet was still able to move while the nozzle has some pressure on the sheet. Then I went back to the Z offset to make sure I didn't need to lower it or raise it at all. Then I simply clicked store settings. Then I went ahead and I disabled the stepper motors and then I grabbed the sheet of paper and I brought the nozzle here to all four corners of the bed using the sheet of paper to see if I can get that same tension as I did when I zeroed the nozzle out in the center of the bed. And lastly, I ran automatic bed leveling and it was good to go. I sliced the model at all standard settings, making sure the bed heating was set to 50. I also used a raft as you can see down here at the bottom. After doing these settings, the print has just been printing successfully and I am just super happy to see this thing finally printing. I was really losing hope after a few months, but it's doing good now. I'm really happy about it. I'm really happy it's printing and I can't wait for this Starkiller helmet from Andor to finish out printing. It's an all-in-one print, so I didn't have to break it up into little pieces and you know chop it this way, chop it that way, like I did with the Green Goblin. I just 3D modeled it and started printing it, and it's been just awesome. Only issue that I had, which was not that big of an issue, was when I came in yesterday morning, the print was paused for some reason, but I just pressed continue and it continued just fine. Now we're, I think, four days into a six-day print, and since it stopped, I'm assuming it's gonna take one extra day. So we're four days into a seven day print. So we're almost there, we're at 51%. We're just over halfway and I can't wait till this thing finishes. The one thing that I find interesting to say the least uh, is that it makes noise. Um, I've never heard a louder printer than the Creality CR10S5. This thing just hums, whistles and makes all sort of techno noises that honestly I think someone could make a song out of it. But let me give you a listen of just how loud this thing is. And you could probably hear it all throughout the video, the humming and the whistling, but I'm gonna put my microphone up to it here so you can really get a listen. Now that thing is pretty loud if you ask me. Now I remember when I was going to get the Creality CR10 Smart, Everyone was saying this thing was silent. It was being advertised as being quiet. But when you went to go watch videos on people reviewing it, everyone was talking about how, hey, this thing isn't quiet. Uh, you can hear the fan. It's, it's a very loud fan. You just hear this fan noise. And I always thought to myself, yeah, you know what? This thing is actually pretty loud. It's got a fan noise going on. But after hearing the Creality CR10S5 and that demonstration I just gave you about how loud those techno noises are, I have really learned to appreciate just how quiet the Creality CR10 Smart really is. Since the Creality CR10 S5 shakes a lot and is currently printing the main helmet, I'm gonna actually print the spikes that you see on the Starkiller helmet that you see in Endor in Luthen's shop. I'm gonna print it out on the Creality CR10 Smart because it doesn't wobble as much and it's free currently. And before I go, I wanted to mention that you have the Creality Hallet here. This is a resin 3D printer. We also have the wash station that it comes with. And I've had this for about a month now. And I'm really excited to get this open and start printing some really cool figures, something with higher detail. I know I've been showcasing FDM printers and what they can do, but I was always curious about the high level of detail that these resin printers can give. So I haven't quite decided what project I'll be doing yet, but I know I want to do something with higher detail. If you guys have any ideas or suggestions that you would like to see with this resin printer, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Maybe we can make a helmet that has really detailed pieces and those really detailed pieces we can print out with the resin printer. And now that the Star Killer helmet is well underway, I feel comfortable starting up the Creality CR10 Smart and getting those spikes printed out. I just think it's a really cool decorative piece that once it's finished, it looked really awesome. And just a quick small update to the workspace area that I got here going on. I did end up switching the tables around so that the, so that the Creality CR10 S5 is here on the right and the CR10 Smart is over there on the left. This allows me to be able to 
tighten and loosen the bed leveling knobs as needed because it was just really difficult to be able to get anything done against that wall over there regarding those knobs. I'd continually hit that power box and it was just too tight to get under there. Make sure to comment down below if you would want to get a CR10S5 and be able to print really massive 3D prints all in one go. By the way, if you want to watch more videos about 3D printing fun props and 3D printers, then check out the playlist that pops up on the screen. Until next time guys, peace, love, and joy.